Hello, investor and trader. Welcome back to another episode of Day Trading Recap. Not just kidding. I'm th we're not going to talk about that today. Although, I did make some day trade today. Uh, AMD, Tesla, PLTR, and Advi. Somehow, these little profits add up to $1,500 today. Hey, as long as they're over $1,000 a day, I'm very happy with, my, with the results. <laughs> so, I'm not going to go over the trade like ex enter and exit. I will, we are going to talk about swing trading and how to build a small account. So when you have a small account, the best strategy I can say is use swing trading because it's less stress, it's less technical analysis involved. I mean, anybody can swing trade, right? You just buy a stock and you hold it for several days or several weeks or several months, and hopefully it'll make it go up so you make some money. That's pretty much swing trading is about. So I'm gonna break it down very, very simple and anybody can follow so let's just get started so before i show the criteria or talk about the criteria i want to show you some of the results first so that way you know exactly what i'm talking about and now after that we go over some example so this video is going to be pretty long but hopefully it helps you guys make some good swing trade decision okay so this is my main account from td ameritrade this account has been around that i've been building since 2017 so it's roughly almost four years old. As you can see right now, uh, the account is at 264% 200, return since the beginning of this account back four years ago. But for 2021, I'm up about 17, 18%, including this recent correction. So you can see at the beginning of the year, it's around 247. Right now, that's six, 264. Just subtract those two numbers. is around 17, 16, 17%-ish return. And these are my current holding right now. And I am in 42% in cash. Now, on a side note, this account right here of buying power is much bigger than my trading account in terms of buying power. So just, this account is, is pretty big, just to get you guys have pers uh, a perspective. So 42% is quite a lot of cash. The reason why is... I swing trade with this account. You can see here, since the beginning of this account, I keep all the record right here. I only made like, uh, let me see, under 325 trades or under 320 trades in almost four years. So that means a, a month, 10, 15 trades, that's it, right? So obviously this is a swing trade account, it's not a day trading account. So that's the first thing I want to you know get, get it out there. So this is my main account that I've been building. The stuff you guys see here is my day trading account. It's two separate accounts. This is from Fidelity, the other one from TD. So now that's one example. Here is another example of another account that I recently started building since September of last year. So this account is like around uh, four months old, six, seven months old already. Uh, as we can see right here, right? It's around 16,000 at the moment. And we can see right here, uh, year to date. You see slowly increasing. This, this is the tech correction right here. But if we go to two years, you're not going to see any two years. You see, it start out what? It start out September 17, 2020. Now, if we go to close position, this is like the profit I took already. You can see, see there, there's a loss there, but it, I hardly have any losses. So I'm going to explain how I do it. I mean, these little profit adds up over the years or over the months, right? So, so far, I collected around 5,000, 6,000 in profits. You can see right here, there's a little red right there, 10 cents loss right there. Yeah, that's, that's a big loss, man. Let's see, up, up, only 10 cent loss on this account, okay? So let's just go to another account. Again, I just wanna show, I just wanna prove my point. So let's go one more example of another account. Again, this is a pretty small account. Well, I think a small account. This account right here is only around 20,000, 19, 20,000, uh, 90, 100, almost 100% return in the past year. So if you go to two years, you can see the date. See, it's pretty small. And it start, the coronavirus start right here. Took my, took my account from 12,000 down to like, 8,000, like, like 4,000 down, like oh, 20, 20, 30% lock down. Hey, but it's okay. It go up over time, right? Because remember, this is swing trading. And then, of course, the correction right here. Now, if we go to close position, you can see for the 2021, I already locked in 2,500 so far. And again, uh, hardly any red trades. So let's go over some of the criteria. Cause now, that's my point, okay? You gonna... You will lose money. It depends how you size it, because each person, you know, sizes the share differently. But I'll explain, explain all along the video. But the way I do it, I hardly lose money in this in this swing trade game. I mean, it's pretty easy. So let's just get started. 
So these are the criteria that I came up with, okay? So we're going to go over one by one, one by one. Okay, so the first thing what I look for is five years or two years to five years on the daily candlestick, okay? So let's go here. So let's pick one stock, for example. Let's, here, let's pick McDonald's, and we are at McDonald's already. <laughs> okay, is uptrend or downtrend? Well, it looked like it's uptrend to me, right? Although there's a big pullback right here because of coronavirus, you know, artificial crash. <laughs> but it's still, right? It's clearly uptrend from 110 all the way to 230. That's an uptrend to me. Okay, now, what happens if it's a downtrend? If it's a downtrend, I would avoid. Just avoid. Avoid, okay? <laughs> okay, next one, next criteria. Is the RSI on the daily candlesticks below 35 on a three months to six months chart? I think I use daily word twice here. It's kind of re re repetitive, so I delete that. So let's check it out. So six months right here. Let's go to three months, six months. Now let's pretend I want to make this McDonald's a swing trade, okay? So this is the question I have to ask myself. Is the RSI on the daily candlestick below 35? Right now, the RSI is not below 35. It is above 70. RSI is right here. Standard setting, 14. Standard settings. Well, I use standard settings. Next question. Is the stochastic on the daily? Same thing, but now it's stochastic. Is this under 35 or above 35? Well, this is clearly above 80, right? I'm looking for 35, like down here. So already it fell the criteria. You see what I mean? It's it's too high. I want to buy when this thing is low, like right here, and when this is low right here. That's why you buy it right here, right? You buy when RSI, or you want to buy a small entry price, right here, when the RSI below 35. The lower, the better. You want to low as much as, as you can, and the stochastic lows too. So if this is low, but this is not that low then that requires more experience. But this is like purely, purely guarantee you will make money in this game. So these two has to be low, uh, prefer below 35. Next question. Is this company paying any dividend? The reason why I put that in there because if you notice here, some of these companies pays a dividend, the stock tends to go down for the next couple of days. You see, dividend down, dividend down. So let's say you decide to swing trade right here and the next couple of days it went down. Don't be freak out. You have to be, be aware of that, okay? And when, if the company pays a dividend, that's just how it is. Is the company in the Dow or the S&P? Now, this question is important because only the good stocks are in the Dow and the S&P, right? S&P are profitable company. Now, if you trade stock like this right here, you see? There's no guarantee because this stock is not even in, in, in the Dow or the S&P. So therefore, this stock is risky. So therefore, this stock is not what I trade. I don't trade this kind of stock. So I would avoid this stock. So nope, it's not in the S&P. So therefore, this stock right here fell the criteria. Although, this does fit the criteria. You see that? It's kind of low, stochastic. RSI is kind of low, but still, this is too much risk. Is the near, near key level of support? Kind of. These are key level support right here. So what are key level support? Those are right here. 50 EMA, 100 EMA, 150 EMA, and 200 EMA. So let's go back to this example. These are the EMA right here. So 50, 100, 150, 200. Sometime even these two EMA. I have when I when I look when I analyze technical analysis, I have six EMA up always. For me, I use six, two momentum and four core EMA. So it has to be near key level support. Okay, next one, proper position sizing. Never go all in at one price. Always get room for error because there's no guarantee in this game. So in other words, what I mean is so. Let's just say you decide to jump in right here, although it didn't fit any of the criteria, and you just want to jump in at 230, thinking that it might go to 235 or 240 or higher, whatever. Okay, do not buy all in. So let's say you only want to buy 10 shares. Buy like two shares or three shares, 20% or 30%, that's it. And leave the rest of buying power in case the stock falls, like down here or somewhere, you can average the cost down. Over time, it will bounce back up. If you buy all here, then you're stuck, and it's not a fun game. Just just imagine you plan to day trade or swing trade this stock right here at McDonald's. 
although it didn't fit any of the criteria. But let's say you did. Let's say you did at, uh, I don't know, 230, for instance, or 228, and you decide to buy here all in. Guess what happened in the next couple of days? Up, down, up, nope, 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 down, 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 nope, 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 down, down, down. You see what I mean? You'd be stuck here for months. I don't know how long. It's called bag holders, they call it. <laughs> you see what I mean? Since November or October, you've been stuck here for like, what, five months already, four months? See, by then, by now, you probably don't, want, don't even want to look at McDonald's anymore because it's just depressing, right? That's why you don't want to buy all in. Because if you buy like two share here, three share here, hey, guess what? Hit key level support right here, right? Like I mentioned right here, see? Buy a key level support. Dude, you could buy some right here. You could buy some right here. You could buy some right here. By now, you probably break even because, you know, it's gone up. Or break even right here too because, you know, you get the idea, right? So never buy all in at one price. Sell at resistance or think you made enough profit. If you sell near key level of resistance, make sure to sell a few pennies or a dime, few dimes below the resistance price. So let's go back to our example. So if I go to three months, you can clearly see the resistance right here, right? That means it's hard to pass. McDonald have a hard, hard time going above 216, agreed? You see how here it fell and go back down. So when you sell, do not sell at 216. Sell like 215, 80 cents, 215, 75 cents, or even 216, 25 cents. Just a few penny or a few dime below it because when you, yes, there are times you go above it, but there are times you're not going to hit it. So if you are getting, if you put, you know, 50 cents or a quarter below, especially a $200 stock, it's pretty much almost guaranteed you will get out near the peak, you know. It's just a psychology of the trader. At the term of the, the number, of the whole number, that's all it is. So just slight, sell slightly below key level of resistance. What else do I have on here that I wrote? Look for simple patterns. Do not overcomplicate your trades. We are not in a competition of who has the worst stock chart and can make, and can make money from it. Now, I laugh at this one because a lot of people, one think they are smart and pick some complicated stock, like parabolic stock or something like that, and try to make money out of it. Yeah, do that 100 trades, do that 1,000 trades, and how many trades, you, you, what is your success rate? You see what I mean? And when you see this right here, you see, I hardly have any red days. It's like almost 100% success. Well, not really, I have a red day right here. I took $9 loss right here, right? But almost 90% success rate. Simply, I follow those simple patterns, right? Now, if you go to six months, you can clearly see McDonald's, even from right here, right? You can see it. It's been bound for the past month, over a month, that it, it bounced between 216 and 2808, or just slightly above this red moving average here, which is the 200. So it's been bouncing right here, right? Look for the stochastic low and the RSI low right here, and you should have known to enter right here because it's K-level support. And let's say you didn't know that. Okay, let's say you missed this trade right here and I bounced at 216. Now it's going back to near this level. Again, it's around that level, right? So what do you do? You're going to buy around this level over here, around 208 or 208 and a half or 209. And where do you sell? Around 214, 215. Because right here, right? Best case is 216. And it bounced up and down. See, very easy to follow, right? Very easy to predict To predict that it's been bouncing up and down, up and down. Now, sometimes it just goes slightly below. Of course, even better because sometimes it just it will bounce. Remember, these are really these are like blue chips, so it's kind of almost guaranteed it will bounce, especially for McDonald's. And notice, so far we have not even talked about candlestick formation, right? This is pretty simple to follow. Okay, next, do not buy a stock when it is far, far, far away from the 50 EMA, aka parabolic. Okay, so let's go to McDonald's again. See right now, McDonald's, as we're speaking right now, see the, right now it's at 3, 331, 332, right? The 50 MA is like way the hell down here. You see what I mean? This kind of stock I avoid because it's too far. I don't want to chase it. So you want to buy key levels like this right here, this price right here, or this price right here, or this price right here. Even better, down here around the, two, the, the, low, the low 200s. So right now, it's a little too late to buy a McDonald's for a swing trade. Unless you're a high risk taker or a day trader, then sure, go ahead. But I'm not. I like I like mine low risk, high reward. So therefore, when the stock moves far, far away, I'll avoid. Guess what's going to happen soon? I can almost guarantee you guys this is going to snap back, just like it just like it did right here. You see that? 
So McDonald's moved far, far away from the 50 EMA, from the 100 EMA, so on and so on. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to snap. It's, it's like a rubber band. The more the stock go higher and higher, almost like above 45, 50 degrees, there are high chances it will snap right back to the moving averages, especially the 50 moving averages. So for McDonald's right now, it is not a buy for a swing trade because it's so far away from the 50 EMA. Next criteria, buy or add position when overall market is red or near key level support. So let's go back to the QQQ because that's, that's the market right there. Uh, it follows the NASDAQ. So what I mean by that is, see this big red candle over here? This is the day that you want to buy. These big green days right here are not you want to buy because you need to do the opposite of what others are doing, especially the retail investors. The retail investors love to buy on green day for some reason. I don't know why they do that. You're supposed to buy on red days, especially on good company. Now, if it's a bad company or no good fundamental and you buy on a bad day, like a red day, you're just asking for, take care, here, free, here, take my money, here, free, free. Don't ever do that. For example, NKLA, right? Everybody know about this stock, right? Man, this CEO is so dirty. Trevor Milton, whatever. Anyway, that's a different story. But yeah, you see this big red day right here? Don't buy this kind of red day, right? Uh, first of all, this stock doesn't fit any of these criteria already, as we mentioned up here, right? See what I mean? And see right here? See how far away from the moving average right here? So it fell so many criteria. That is why you don't see me trade this kind of stock ever. Yes, you might say, hey man, you missed the run from $10 all the way to 90 I don't care. <laughs> I want to sleep well at night, right? I mean, sure, you may make some money right here. Like I said, do that 100 times, do that 500 times, do that 1,000 times. Tell me if you have 100% success rate or 90% or 80% success rate, and then we'll talk. Most of the time, you will not get that kind of success rate, maybe like 10% success rate. It's very hard to trade these parabolic. Only the professional or real experienced trader know how to do it. Like I said, this criteria is like, even a 10 year old can do these criteria. It's so simple. Okay, what is the next criteria that I set here? Avoid IPO and avoid parabolic. Again, this is parabolic right here. IPO, what are those? Initial public offerings such as, mm, let me find one that recently can, on top of my head. Oh, there we go, AI, this is pretty IPO. So IPO. How do you know it's an IPO? Well, it's very simple. Just go to the chart, go to the daily, right? Daily right here. Go to like five years, 10 years. Look, nothing happened, you see? Nothing happened. So, it's, so where's the beginning of the date? Uh, right here, around December, January-ish, right? Right here. So you, you can clear, well, the date is right here, uh, December 10th. So you can clearly see this company is less than two years old or especially less than five years old for sure, right? That means it's just IPO. So IPO are hella risky for me at least. The, well, this is like like pure beginners, okay? just like you don't know anything. Just avoid IPO. You never know how high it will go. Most of the IPO are overpriced anyways. Just keep that in mind. Again, you want to have a, almost 100% success rate or 80-90% success rate in swing trading. Just avoid IPO. Unless you know what you're doing, then sure, go ahead. Okay, what else do we have here? Buy or add position? Okay, we talked about that. Uh, here's some example of what to look for overall, like the Dow down 2% or the NASDAQ down 2%. Don't buy when the NASDAQ down like, you know, 50 points or 100 points. That's nothing. That's like, that's like a normal day for them. Okay. Now you do the opposite. So when do you sell? You sell into resistance or you sell on super green day like I did right here. Right. I just talked about that. So look at the QQQ again. The overall NASDAQ for the past three months. You can see all these big green candles, right? That's a huge move. Look at the RSI and Stochastic. It's getting oversold, you see? So what I'm gonna do, let's go to transaction. See? Da, 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 da. Sell, 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 sell. Eh, buy some here. But this is like on the, on the fourth, on the fifth, two days ago. A bunch of sales, why? Cause it's green. Dude, when it's green like this, I'm taking my profit. And look at it, it's getting farther, farther away from these 50 EMA. Just do the opposite of what other retailers are doing, in other words. Most of all, just have fun doing it. Just practice and practice, right? 
And of course, when you make your profit, give back to charity, share your information to other friends and family, how to make money in the market. I mean, it's pretty simple. It just requires a lot of practice. That's all it is. So let's go over some examples like I said earlier in the video. Okay, uh, best one I can pick right here, uh, very obvious, Amazon. So let's pick Amazon. So Amazon's right here. Let me highlight it so that I know which one I'm talking about. There's so many numbers and stuff here. So Amazon, buy right there. What else do we have here? I think I, I bought Amazon two times. Yes, I did. Right here too. Buy Amazon. Okay. So I bought Amazon on the 3rd of March and on the 29th of March. Look at the price where I bought these. Around 3000 Okay, let's go to Amazon. For the past three months, okay? Past three months, like I said right here on the criteria. See? Stochastic right here R and RSI. Okay, let's check it out. Look. Yes, it's below 35. Yes, it's below 35. See? That's where I bought it, around, around right here, right? So let's go back oh, to the exact date on the 3rd. Okay, where's the 3rd at? Whoop, come on. No, no, that's too much. Sorry. Nope, right here. Nope, right here. Right here. Yay, right here. Look, right here. I bought on this day right here. That's pretty good, right? Around 3000 So, yep, fit the criteria. But guess what happened? It bounced, but I didn't take profit. It's okay. It can happen. And then, wait, is that even right? Yes, yeah, right. I have, I, have, I have time to take some profit right here, but I didn't. It's okay. And then right here, too. I bought it again the second time. Where I bought it again? On the 29th. Okay, let's go to the 29th. Where is the 29th? Right here. Right here. Stochastic is kind of low, but not too low. But it's around. See, uh, again, it, it's it's kind of near the three thousand. Again, the whole number three thousand. It's just the, the psychology of a trader. So I bought some here. So where did I sell? Uh, I just sold it uh, yesterday, right here, three twenty-five. Right here on this candle. I sold on this candle over here because it's gone up too much. You see what I mean? So that's one example. Let's go to another example. Let's just pick one. Let's just pick Clorox. Make this green. It's easy, easy to follow. Okay, I buy right there. Clorox. Any more Clorox? Okay, over here I sell. Okay. Oh, this is a different Clorox. I, okay, I did it two times. Okay, so I sold right here and I buy again right here. And then I sell right here. Okay, so let's go this one. Okay, this one, this one already sold. I mean, I buy somewhere down here, or I bought Clorox somewhere down here. Oh, right there. There we go. Right here, I think. Anyways, let's just go to the, the recent one, the recent trade. So I buy right there. Okay, so Clorox on the 18th. Let's go Clorox. March 18. What day is that? Right here. Oh, right here. See, red day, right? And I bought it at what price? Low 80s. Low 82, 182. Yep, right here. Now you may ask, how do you know the buyer right here doesn't fit the criteria? Again, this is experience, right? Sorry. Uh, yes, it does not fit the criteria for this for this example. But what I do know is buy in the low 180 and below. Because why? Because right here, I don't want to buy when it's above. You see that? These are resistance when what you want to sell. Because that's exactly what I did. I sold at 95 on the 29th. So only a couple, hold like for a couple of days, and I sold it right here, ish. Sorry, this this is this is pretty bad. It's more experience, but you get the idea, right? You buy a key level support on red day and stuff like that, because on the, in the again on the five years or two years, you can clearly see Clorox is uptrend, right? Even you buy a nine one two ninety five right now, the worst swing trader ever. If you hold this for several months, I can almost guarantee you you will make money, because if earning comes and this company does well, it will pop, because it belongs in the S and P and the Dow. Let's go one more example. Let me see what can I pick down here. Oh, I know. Uh, I can pick UNH. It's pretty good right here, I think. Yeah, UNH. Okay. UNH is United Health Group. I think I'll buy it right here. Okay, I bought it right here. Let me highlight this. And I sold UNH. Where did I sold it at? Right here. Okay, on the twenty fifth, on the fifth of, of February, UNH. So let's go three months. Twenty fifth, somewhere right here, right? The twenty fifth, right here, right here, right here. Right, on the fifth. My bad. The fifth is like right here. Right here. 
See, RSI is low, stochastic is low, near the near the key level of moving averages, right? This is 150 right here, almost 200. So that's how I know to buy right now. If we go to six months, you can clearly see it's going down, you see? But guess what? Stochastic is low, RSI is low, near the key level as I, I, just, as I listed. That's how I know to get in around 220-ish. Not gonna be exact, but you get the idea. So where did I sell? I sold it at uh, on the third of the 3:36. I think I sold a little bit early. Yeah, I did. I mean, I missed the whole entire run right here. So I sold it like right here ish because I saw these wicks right here. I thought at that time it could not pass it. Probably go back down. But hey, you never you never gonna top the top anyways or the bottom. That's why you never buy all in, right? Always give room for error. So that's pretty much wrapped up. Hopefully you guys learned something from this example, right? So you can clearly see that. 380, 375 for UNH is not a buy. Look, uh, look at the stochastic right here. You see what I mean? It's too damn high. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to go back down. And it will go back down. Mark my word for it. How low will it go? I don't know. Maybe down to here somewhere. But it will go down. So that doesn't mean go short. You know what I mean? But again, shorting is for experienced trader anyway. We are talking about beginners here. So when is the best time to buy UNH? Well, it's pretty obvious. Just look at the big, the big picture, as I mentioned. We can clearly see a pattern here. Can you guys see it? Very simple, follow. Well, let's go to, to the one year. Every single time UNH hit this blue moving average, what's gonna ha happen from the previous history? Or this orange line, which is the 100 and 150. Right here, bounce, right here, bounce, right here, bounce, right here, bounce. So guess what's gonna happen in the future? Down here, bounce, right? Because all investor and trader and institu and institutional traders want to buy, they buy these levels right here or below. They're not gonna buy these damn spikes right here. Guess what they, they guess what they be doing? They be taking profits. Exactly. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys on the next one. Bye.